welcome to the not actual return of getting out of stone. I just watched two of the movies and I wanted to talk about them basically, but I'm going to split it up in two so it has a little more. I have watched these probably several months ago, so we're going to go off of that, but I also still remember most of them about them because I wrote notes because I'm, I'm smart and also because one of them is just bad, which is what we're going to start with. And that movie is Aloha, a little little rom com with I need to remember his name, Bradley Cooper and Emma Stone. That is just not good. So the whole thing is that it's set in Hawaii because they just needed to get the guys on vacation. And this military contractor dude, Bradley Cooper. His name in this is Brian Gilchrist, which sounds like a radio host kind of name. He's going to meet with his, like, lost lover, which is Rachel McAd- McAdams. But Emma Stone is also here, who's like a, like, guard, basically, for him while he's in Hawaii. Because she's from Hawaii. And, like, on paper, this sounds like a good movie because I like Rachel McAdams and I like Emma Stone Bradley Cooper looks stupid in this that's all I want to say he looks really dumb and he acts just as dumb which is really the problem with most of this is that it's just kind of dumb but it's like it's fine it's not as aggressively bad as everything else, but it's not good. Like, I wouldn't call this a movie I would want to rewatch. But Emma Stone's good in it. She's acting it up. She's going hard. She always does. But she's just not given anything to work with. The dialogue is just, like, not, not there. But it did make me realize I know nothing about Hawaii, so a bunch of so I was like, I don't know what that means, and then it was like, oh, that's just a Hawaiian culture thing that I know nothing about. So I I learned a little bit about that, but also like this movie kind of forgets that it's supposed to be about Hawaii and like related to like Hawaiian culture stuff, but. They they don't. It's there for like ten minutes, or it's like set dressing, for just like a generic rom com. But not like a good one. Like I watched Ticket to Paradise, which is a similar concept. Like not really, but they both involve the everyone being on a like special island, and like finding love there. But Ticket to Paradise is like fun and you like you enjoy it or at least like I enjoyed watching it but like this one I'm like it just isn't it just isn't good just not it's just uncomfortable but it's also just predictable and bland Bradley Cooper just kind of He's like, I hate the world. It sucks. I'm never going to do this. I'm never going to fall in love again. Everything's just bad. I'm going to become the worst. And you're like, okay, cool. That's going away. And Rachel McAdams here just like married. You're like, oh yeah, he's obviously not getting with her. This movie's not that bold. Like, it's... Which isn't always a problem when you're like, I can, I see the thread. I can see the world lines where it's like, I know where this movie's going to end. But, like, it's the the journey along that needs to be interesting in that point where it's, like, I would need to care and, like, be having a good time. And I just was not. It's just... It's just there. Like, I don't... It's not the worst one we've watched. That's not hard to do. 
but it's not like there's much that I'd be like, yeah, you should really watch Aloha. It's just a, like a great rom com. If you want, if you like like the people in it, then like maybe you watch it, or you're doing like what I'm doing, where I'm trying to watch every movie with like a certain actor actress in it. Then like you have to, but like I wouldn't willingly be like, yeah, you should just go watch Aloha. There's also just some really weird choices in this movie beyond, like, forgetting that Hawaii is the place that this movie is set in and is, like, supposed to be, like, centering what all the romance and stuff is on. Because John Krasinski's in this as, like, a military dude and, like, he's buddies with Bradley Cooper's character. But, like, he, he doesn't talk. He says, like, maybe ten words the entire movie. And it's like... It's like, Why? Like, I don't really understand what the point is. Because he, John Krasinski is Rachel McAdams' husband in this. They have a family. They have kids. It's a functioning family. Brian Gilchrist, Bradley Cooper kind of throws a wrench in it. But, like, they're fine. They survive. But he just doesn't talk. And it's like... Like, it's not like a trauma thing, as far as I'm aware. It's just, like, he just doesn't. Like, he just communicates through, like, body language and, like, gestures. And, like, this isn't a good bit. It it doesn't work. But, you know, nothing in this movie really works. It's just not aggressively bad. Because the, even the like central plot line or like how this romance is supposed to like be paralleled is with like a kind of Hawaiian myth thing. Where it's like there's a volcano and stuff, and it's like there's a fire. But then the movie's very quickly like that's we don't know what we don't know what to do with that. Go away, get away. It's not relevant. And then, the whole thing is also like trying to get like, a certain, like, section of the Hawaiian citizens to, like, have their, like, it was something, I forget, honestly, I forget. Again, this was, like, months ago. I remembered more than, and I probably should have just rewatched it. But it wasn't on anything I could find. I watched it on Tubi with ads, which probably made it worse, because I had to watch the ads, and I was like, is this worth sitting through a minute of ads for, like, sketchy drugs and weird stuff? This is an aside, but Tubi is a streaming service. They have, like, good stuff, but I've only watched, like, this and, like, critically acclaimed things that are, like, not on any other streamer, and yet it's recommending me, like, softcore porn movies, and I'm like, where did, where did you get this? Where did this come up? Is this from, like, watching Mandy, or is it from Aloha? Did those two somehow, like, connect? But that's not relevant to the movie. I just am confused. It just, I don't, it's one of those things where it's like, what what happened to the algorithm? That was like, yeah, you, you do want softcore porn movies. And I'm like, no, I really don't. Like, I'm, I'm good. We cannot do that. But that's really all I have to say. The only good thread is that the billionaire guy doesn't get what he wants and tries, he can't privatize the island and all that fun stuff that he wants to do because he's a billionaire. So, like, good for him. Proud of, proud of us for stopping billionaires. We really stuck it to the man. And I said I'm going to make this two videos for different, the two different movies, but I'm, I'm not. We're just going to go to the next one, which was The Amazing Spider-Man 1. The first one, because the second one wasn't on Netflix, so I didn't watch it yet. And honestly, this one is, is just fine. But, like, fine in a good way. Like, there's a difference between, like, the fine in a bad way, and then the fine in a way where it's like, wow, I didn't hate that. 
but like it wasn't the best one we watched because right now there's like there's there's two ceilings or there's no there's no what am I talking about there's a ceiling and a floor right now we have the like really good stuff and then we have like Gangster Squad in the middle and then we're putting Amazing Spider-Man right next to Gangster Squad in that like middle but then like the other f- five movies are just like trash where I'm like I don't ever want to watch this again and the fact that I've watched some of them twice shows my dedication to Emma Stone I will watch a movie she's in even if it's just the worst but Amazing Spider-Man 1 not that bad I was kind of excited to watch it because, like, I watched No Way Home and I was like, I don't know if I've actually seen these before, so I should, like, watch them. But I have seen the first one. I remember, because I remember the lizard guy. I don't remember when I saw it or what I saw it on, but I know I have seen the first this first one before. And the lizard is just, like, such a funny villain. Or he's just, like, it's not like a world domination thing. He's just like, I'm a lizard, and now I want everyone else to be lizards, because I put the little lizard in me, so I could fix my arm. Which, like, in theory, his, like, motivation isn't bad, but then he gets, like, Green Goblin, where he's like, my mind has been taken over by this lizard drug that I made to try and fix my arm. And I'm like, yeah, okay, buddy, let's get you back to the retirement home. I don't know. I don't know. I don't really... I don't hate it, but it's just kind of... It's a movie. And it's just a strange one for some things. The school bit, the, like, Peter Parker in school, I will say, the Emma Stone blonde look in this, or look as Gwen, not my favorite. It works, but, like, it's not up there in terms of ones I'm like, I need to see that again. Let's do that again. But there's also this, like, little notion of the school where it, which is also kind of true in the, like, other Spider-Man ones where it's like, the school is just totally okay with bullying. Like, they're just like, yeah, you're a nerd. Push, bully, hurt you. And it's like, I don't think that, you say you should be functioning as a school. You shouldn't, you know, be vigilant about that because uh, it's your job as a school. This is like mid twenty tens, early twenty tens. You should not be allowing kids to get bullied. But then we get the classic where he gets his powers and he just ba 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 ba. Guy's gone. But. The nice one of this one is it's, like, a kind of interesting take on the, like, Uncle Ben, where it's, like, a murder mystery, kind of, but, like, a very, like, that is the back burner of, like, the superhero plot, where it is, like, he's trying to find his his dad and, like, understand why he died, because it was kind of sus, but, like, it's not as mu- it's not a murder mystery in like the traditional like there is a bunch or like the knives out it's not like knives out there is a murder that is trying to be solved hence it is a murder mystery we do not know who killed or did all the stuff to his dad basically but yeah and it turns out it's just a guy just a guy he was getting a little too strong, and they offed him to get the formula. Got that Krabby Patty, and he couldn't get it back. But my main thought about, like, the villain, or little guy, Kirk Connors, was it like, he looks like a normal person, which, like, helps. Because, like, most of them are, like, big actors, and I'm like, Willem Dafoe, you look like a sus guy. You look like a villain. But, like, Kirk Connors, I'm like, this dude is just a, he's just a guy. He's just a guy who wanted to get his arm back. But instead, he turned into a lizard. And I'm like, okay. Cool. Good for him. Go off. But. 
he's just like, yeah, I'm a doctor, dude. I just want to fix my arm. I just, you know, I really want to make it work. But then Peter comes in and is just like, what's up, everybody? I work here. I'm going to mess everything up. But not really, because it's kind of also, like, Peter Parker's fault. But, like, Mary Parker in this, he, he does just, like, walk in the building. He just, like, pulls up to the lab and is like, hey, guys, I work here now. And just casually strolling through the thing. And it's like, um, okay, I, I guess, like, you can, you can do that. But I think this Peter, like, as people have said, like, the darker one, but, like, I don't know if people have said that. I'm saying that because, like, it felt more brutal where he's just, like, messing with these guys. He's just like, eh, you think you can kill me? Eh, you just got him. You're gone. And he feels like he's just just messing with them. As opposed to like being a superhero boy where he's like the goody two shoes. Like he saves the day. But he's a little he's unhinged. We gotta take care of him. Spider Man's a menace. We gotta take care of him in this one. But I don't know. I just I think I had I had the notion from No Way Home where, like, it's been a while, and Trick Garfield's just coming back, and he's, like, having the time of his life. And I'm like, go off, buddy. I'm going to watch your movies because you look so happy. And then it's just, like, tonal whiplash. Not, like, wh- not quite whiplash, but, like, like, oh, okay, this is not an MCU movie. This is a, this is a proper Spider-Man movie. But the other thing is that like I said, the school bit is like. I ch- I think this would have been better as like the Peter in college. Because nobody in this movie looks like a teenager. I'm like Andrew Garfield. You are not fooling me for a second. You are an adult. You are like twenty something years old. And if you are not, I'm gonna do just be confused because I don't see that. It's it's one of those like. It's adults playing teenagers, and I'm like, sure, some of you I can buy, but, like, not really. Like, Tom Holland I can buy because he's, like, he looks like a kid. And maybe he's potentially getting engaged as, like, a, or Tom Holland is. And I'm like, oh, you're an adult, but, like, you can play it up so you don't really feel that way. But this one is just like, I, you're, you're in college. You should not be here. There are children here. That this is illegal. Get away. But is Peter also is just like a god? Not a god. A god is a little much. But he's like just good at everything. And I'm like, where did you get this? Like I get it's like superhero. Like we don't have time to explain how he got good at everything. But I'm like, you seem a little too smart. And I don't really have any justification for why you are. You just are here, and you're like, what's up, guys? I'm really smart everybody doing and I'm like oh, okay cool cool but he he certainly is a spider-man that's really all I have to say like about him he's just kind of he's there he's really not my favorite but you know, go ahead. You can if you make Spider Amazing Spider Man three, I will not stop you. I don't see why they would because like they Okay. I just had a brain big brain idea. If you're gonna bring him back again, put him in the Spider Verse. Because the Spider Verse is the best Spider Man anything. And uh I just don't want them to make more Spider-Mans when you have Spider-Verse right there and it is just peak. It's just the best. But that's what I have to say about Peter. But like the actual plot I just don't it's just whatever. Like he's a he's a lizard guy. He wants to turn everyone into lizards. My little note was he just wants to make everyone lizards. 
and you know go off dude but it's also illegal well I well yeah it's, it's like forcing it about people I don't think I don't know why I paused to question that that didn't really need to be questioned I'm pretty sure that's illegal but I also had the second question which was related to that was like whenever he is like existing in the sewers in his little sewer lab just like lizards are like crawling up from like the sewer and I'm like where are you coming from like where why are there lizards in New York because like wait are they rat lizards because I would think he's trying to experiment but like obviously not on people yet so is he just like chucking some rats with like lizard juice Wait, that makes sense. I just explained myself out of out of a plot hole. Let's go. Well, he did eventually lizard some people, but only like twenty of them. So you know, like that'll barely make the news. Everyone's fine again. You know, nothing really bad happened. But you know. That's how it be. Sometimes you gotta turn twenty people into a lizard. Sometimes you just you just lose because a teenager with spider powers turns it off, along with his girlfriend in a relationship that definitely is not going to work. But we kind of could figure that out. And I'm glad this is building off of that. I'm glad that they at least like acknowledge that they're like. You are Spider-Man. I am just a a person. This is never going to work. I'm like, yes, that is true. Because uh, you are a superhero that has people after you. There are villains. And uh, Gwen is just just a girl. Just a person. She doesn't have any power. She's just smart. Now, if she was Spider-Gwen, then it'd be a little different. But she is not. She is just a, she is just a person. That's okay. I don't think she she would ever become Spider Gwen, but like if they wanted to do that, if Emma Stone's down for that, go off. I support it. But like find a way to make the make the fit a little better, make the hairstyle a little, a little look a little better, or just don't because Spider Verse exists and there's already Spider Gwen there and she's great and I don't want more of them. But that's really it for both the movies. I watched them a while ago. We're going to do a quick... Let me look at my diary from when I actually watched these. Because it was a long time ago this year. Let's see. Let's find out. Let's find out. That was sometime in May. May or June. So I'm looking at my letterbox to make sure I can see when I watched this. It was June when I watched both of these. June when I watched Aloha. And then June when I also watched Spider-Man. There was about a six day difference between these. When I was still like, yeah, I can make these. But now I'm in my new setup for the time being. It's very messy for those that are watching the video. I'm aware I can do nothing about it. But, you know, we take what we can get. And I just figured I should make this at some point so that I've actually made it. Just because I have made it. I did it. We're back. Not really, because I don't think any of the other ones we have left are actually on any streaming service. Which means I have to go out and find them, which is easier said than done. Because I don't want to have to pay for all of them. But I think that's the route that's probably going to end up happening. I need to look to see if I own any of them here. Because now I have access to my parents' video DVD collection. And they might have some more that I don't have. But we will see. When will the next one of these be? I have no idea. Whenever I can get around to watching them. Because I do not have the time or energy that time to sit down and watch a movie. But 
I will try. My goal is to finish this at some point in my life. And this will be done. I will finish it all. And ideally, that will end with La La Land and just... My, I just have everyone around me. But I also have had a slight idea, which is... I know a bunch of people that, like, want to see La La Land with me. So I think what I might do is I might have repeat episodes just to be me talking about it with, like, guests. Because it's like, look, I love this movie a lot. It is literally my favorite movie of all time. And I want to talk about it with a lot of people. Because a lot of people have, like, specifically been like, hey, I want to watch La La Land with you. And I'm like, yes. Let's do it. Let's go. So, maybe, I don't know when that'll happen. That is a far off thought, but it is a thought I had. And that I'm speaking so that I don't forget it. But other than that, hopefully you enjoy these months late rambles about a movies that I will forget after this, now that they have served their purpose. I have spoken about them. They are done. On to the next one, which is whichever one I can find first. Goodbye.